The utility electricity sector in India has one national grid with an installed capacity of 346.05 GW as on 31 October 2018. Renewable power plants constituted 33.60% of total installed capacity. During the fiscal year 2017-18, the gross electricity generated by utilities in India was 1,303.49 terawatt-hours and the total electricity generation utilities and non -utilities in the country was 1,486.5 terawatt-hours. The gross electricity consumption was 1,149 kilowatt-hours per capita in the year 2017-18. India is the world's third largest producer and third largest consumer of electricity. Electric energy consumption in agriculture was recorded highest in 2015-16 among all countries. The per capita electricity consumption is low compared to many countries despite cheaper electricity tariff in India. India has surplus power generation capacity but lacks adequate infrastructure for supplying electricity to all needy people. In order to address the lack of adequate electricity supply to all the people in the country by March 2019, the Government of India launched a scheme called Power for All. This scheme will ensure continuous and uninterrupted electricity supply to all households, industries and commercial establishments by creating and improving necessary infrastructure. It is a joint collaboration of the Government of India with states to share funding and create overall economic growth. India's electricity sector is dominated by fossil fuels, and in particular coal, which in 2017 18 produced about three fourths of all electricity. However, the government is pushing for an increased investment in renewable energy. The National Electricity Plan of 2018 prepared by the Government of India states that the country does not need additional non-renewable power plants in the utility sector until 2027, with the commissioning of 50,025 MW coal-based power plants under construction and achieving 275,000 MW total installed renewable power capacity after retirement of nearly 48,000 MW old coal-fired plants. Topic History Topic The first demonstration of an electric light in Calcutta now Kolkata was conducted on 24 July 1879 by P. W. Fleury & Co. On 7 January 1897, Kilburn & Co. secured the Calcutta Electric Lighting Licence as agents of the Indian Electric Co., which was registered in London on 15 January 1897. A month later, the company was renamed the Calcutta Electric Supply Corporation. The control of the company was transferred from London to Calcutta only in 1970. Enthused by the success of electricity in Calcutta, power was thereafter introduced in Bombay, now Mumbai. Mumbai saw electric lighting demonstration for the first time in 1882 at Crawford Market and the Bombay Electric Supply and Tramways Company Best set up a generating station in 1905 to provide electricity for the tramway. The first hydroelectric installation in India was installed near a tea estate at Sidrapong for the Darjeeling municipality in 1897. The first electric street light in Asia was lit on 5 August 1905 in Bangalore. The first electric train in the country ran on the harbour line between Bombay's Victoria Terminus and Kurla on 3 February 1925. On 18 August 2015, Cochin International Airport became the world's first fully solar-powered airport with the inauguration of a dedicated solar plant. India began using grid management on a regional basis in the 1960s. Individual state grids were interconnected to form five regional grids covering mainland India. The grids were the northern, eastern, western, northeastern and southern grids. These regional links were established to enable transmission of surplus electricity between states in each region. In the 1990s, the Indian government began planning for a national grid. Regional grids were initially interconnected by asynchronous HVDC back-to-back -back links facilitating limited exchange of regulated power. The links were subsequently upgraded to high capacity synchronous links. The first interconnection of regional grids was established in October 1991 when the northeastern and eastern grids were interconnected. The western grid was interconnected with the aforementioned grids in March 2003. The northern grid was also interconnected in August 2006, forming a central grid synchronously connected operating at one frequency. 
The sole remaining regional grid, the Southern Grid, was synchronously interconnected to the Central Grid on 31 December 2013 with the commissioning of the 765 kV Reicher Sola Pure Transmission Line, thereby establishing the National Grid. By the end of calendar year 2015, despite poor hydroelectricity generation, India had become a power surplus nation with huge electric power generation capacity idling for want of power demand. The calendar year 2016 started with steep fall in the international price of energy commodities such as coal, diesel oil, naphtha, bunker fuel and LNG which are used in electricity generation in India. Earlier many of the power stations which are using fuels other than coal were unable to operate due to high cost of LNG and petro products. This situation has changed due to glut in petroleum products globally. The prices are falling to such an extent that these fuels have become cheaper to give competition for pithead coal-based power generators. Many of the stranded gas and liquid fuel-based power stations would be competing with indigenous coal-based power stations in an electricity market where demand growth is not encouraging. All the segments of the electricity sector such as fuel suppliers, fuel transporters, railways, harbors, pipelines, etc., electricity generators, electricity transmission companies and distribution companies would be facing severe competition to cut down the prices and improve their operating efficiency in a final consumer-dictated market. Due to tepid growth in electricity consumption, coal stocks are continuously building up at power stations as well as coal mines. New installations of renewable energy in India surpassed installations of fossil fuel for the first time in 2016 17. On March 29, 2017, the Central Electricity Authority C stated that for the first time India has become net exporter of electricity. India exported 5,798 gigawatt-hours to neighbouring countries, against a total import of 5,585 gigawatt-hours. Topic installed capacity Topic The total installed power generation capacity is sum of utility capacity, captive power capacity and other non-utilities Topic Utility power Topic The total installed capacity is after deducting the retired capacity, if any. As of the 31st of March 2017, i.e. end of 12th five-year plan, the achieved thermal power generation capacity addition excluding renewable power is 91,730 megawatts against the target of 161,403 megawatts during the 12th five-year plan. Nearly 70,000 megawatts is in various stages of construction as on the 31st of March 2017. The total installed utility power generation capacity as on 30 April 2018 with sector-wise and type-wise breakup as is given below. Topic captive power topic The installed captive power generation capacity above 1 megawatt capacity in the industries is 54,997 megawatts as on 31 March 2018 and generated 183,000 gigawatt-hours during the fiscal year 2017-18. Another 75,000 megawatts capacity diesel power generation sets excluding sets of size above 1 megawatt and below 100 kVA are also installed in the country. In addition, there are innumerable DG sets of capacity less than 100 kVA to cater to emergency power needs during the power outages in all sectors such as industrial, commercial, domestic and agriculture. Topic Installed capacity by state or territory Topic. The latest breakup of state-wise installed capacity is given in the table below. Topic. Demand Topic. Demand trends during the fiscal year 2017-18, the utility energy availability was 1,205 billion kWh with a shortfall of requirement by 8 billion kWh against 1,230 billion kWh anticipated. The peak load met was 160,752 megawatts with a shortfall of requirement by 3,314 megawatts minus 2 percent against 169,130 megawatts anticipated. In LGBR 2018 report, India's Central Electricity Authority anticipated for the 2018-19 fiscal year, energy surplus and peaking surplus to be 4.6 percent and 2.5 percent respectively. 
Though few states are expected to face energy shortage, power would be made available adequately from the surplus regions with the available excess capacity into regional transmission links. By the end of calendar year 2015, India has become power surplus country despite lower power tariffs. Demand drivers off the 1.4 billion people in the world who have no access to electricity, India accounts for over 160 million, some 32 million homes. The International Energy Agency estimates India will add between 600 gigawatts to 1,200 gigawatts of additional new power generation capacity before 2050. This added new capacity is equivalent to the 740 gigawatts of total power generation capacity of European Union EU27 in 2005. The technologies and fuel sources India adopts, as it adds this electricity generation capacity, may make significant impact to global resource usage and environmental issues. Some 260 million Indians use traditional fuels, fuel wood, agricultural waste, and biomass cakes, for cooking and general heating needs. These traditional fuels are burned in cook stoves, known as chula or chula in some parts of India. Traditional fuel is inefficient source of energy, its burning releases high levels of smoke, PM10 particulate matter, NOx, SOx, PAHs, polyaromatics, formaldehyde, carbon monoxide and other air pollutants. Some reports, including one by the World Health Organization, claim 300,000 to 400,000 people in India die of indoor air pollution and carbon monoxide poisoning every year because of biomass burning and use of chulas. Traditional fuel burning in conventional cook stoves releases unnecessarily large amounts of pollutants, between 5 and 15 times higher than industrial combustion of coal, thereby affecting outdoor air quality, haze and smog, chronic health problems, damage to forests, ecosystems and global climate. Burning of biomass and firewood will not stop, these reports claim, unless electricity or clean burning fuel and combustion technologies become reliably available and widely adopted in rural and urban India. The growth of electricity sector in India may help find a sustainable alternative to traditional fuel burning. In addition to air pollution problems, a 2007 study finds that discharge of untreated sewage is single most important cause for pollution of surface and ground water in India. There is a large gap between generation and treatment of domestic wastewater in India. The problem is not only that India lacks sufficient treatment capacity but also that the sewage treatment plants that exist do not operate and are not maintained. Majority of the government-owned sewage treatment plants remain closed most of the time in part because of the lack of reliable electricity supply to operate the plants. The wastewater generated in these areas normally percolates in the soil or evaporates. The uncollected wastes accumulate in the urban areas cause unhygienic conditions, release heavy metals and pollutants that leaches to surface and groundwater. Almost all rivers, lakes and water bodies are severely polluted in India. Water pollution also adversely impacts river, wetland and ocean life. Reliable generation and supply of electricity is essential for addressing India's water pollution and associated environmental issues. Other drivers for India's electricity sector are its rapidly growing economy, rising exports, improving infrastructure and increasing household incomes. The per capita annual domestic electricity consumption in India during the year 2009 was 96 kilowatt hours in rural areas and 288 kilowatt hours in urban areas for those with access to electricity in contrast to the worldwide per capita annual average of 2600 kilowatt hours and 6200 kilowatt hours in the European Union. Topic rural electrification topic As on 28 April 2018, 12 days ahead of the set target, all Indian villages were electrified. India's Ministry of Power launched Dean Dayal Upadhyaya Gram Jyoti Yojana as one of its flagship program in July 2015 with the objective of providing round-the-clock power to the rural areas. It focuses on reforms in rural power sector by separation of feeder lines rural households and agricultural and strengthening of transmission and distribution infrastructure. The earlier scheme for rural electrification viz. Rajiv Gandhi Grameen Vidyatikaran Yojana has been subsumed in the new scheme as its rural electrification component. As of 10 October 2018, 158.43 million rural households are provided with electricity, which is 92% of the 172 million total rural households. 
Topic Urban electrification topic Up to 10 October 2018, 41.45 million urban households are provided with electricity, which is 97% of the 42.67 million total urban households. Topic per capita consumption topic Note, per capita consumption equals gross electricity generation plus net import, mid-year population. Topic electricity generation topic India's electricity generation from 1950 to 1985 were very low when compared to developed nations. Since 1990, India has recorded faster growth in electricity generation. India's electricity generation has increased from 179 TWh in 1985 to 1057 TWh in 2012. Power generation by coal-fired plants and non-conventional renewable energy sources res has mainly contributed to the growth in the total electricity generation, whereas the contribution from natural gas, oil and hydro plants has decreased in the last five years 2012 to 2017. The gross utility electricity generation excluding imports from Bhutan is 1236 billion kilowatt hours during the year 2016-17 against the corresponding actual generation of 1168 billion kWh during the year 2015-16 with 5.81% annual growth. Notes, coal includes lignite also, MISC includes emergency DG sets generation, etc. Asterisk hydro includes pumped storage generation, Na data not available The total generation from all renewable energy sources is nearly 15% of the total electricity generation utility and captive in India. Topic thermal power Topic India's electricity sector consumes about 72% of the coal produced in the country. Topic pollution from thermal power plants Topic The high ash content in India's coal affects the thermal power plant's potential emissions. Therefore, India's Ministry of Environment and Forests has mandated the use of beneficiated coals whose ash content has been reduced to 34% or lower in power plants in urban, ecologically sensitive and other critically polluted areas, and ecologically sensitive areas. Coal benefaction industry has rapidly grown in India, with current capacity topping 90 mount. India has an extensive review process, one that includes environment impact assessment, prior to a thermal power plant being approved for construction and commissioning. The Ministry of Environment and Forests has published a technical guidance manual to help project proposers and to prevent environmental pollution in India from thermal power plants. The operating coal-fired power stations both in utility and captive power sectors need to invest nearly 12 Indian rupees and 50 paise millions per megawatt capacity for installing pollution control equipment to comply with the latest emission norms notified by the Ministry of Environment and Forests in the year 2016. India has banned import of pet coke for using as fuel. Topic: <laughs> Coal supply constraints. Topic. A large part of Indian coal reserve is similar to Gondwana coal. It is of low calorific value and high ash content. The carbon content is low in India's coal, and toxic trace element concentrations are negligible. The natural fuel value of Indian coal is poor. On average, the Indian power plants using India S coal supply consume about 0.7 kg of coal to generate a kWh, whereas United States thermal power plants consume about 0.45 kg of coal per kWh. This is because of the difference in the quality of the coal, as measured by the gross calorific value GCV. On average, Indian coal has a GCV of about 4,500 kilocalories per kilogram, whereas the quality elsewhere in the world is much better. For example, in Australia, the GCV is 6,500 kilocalories per kilogram, approximately. In the year 2017, India imported nearly 130 MTOE, nearly 200 million tons of steam coal and coking coal, which is 29% of total consumption to meet the demand in electricity, cement and steel production. China has banned import of high ash coal, high sulfur coal and contaminated coal with trace metals which are causing air pollution. The state and central power generation companies are permitted by government of India with flexible coal linkage swaps from inefficient plants to efficient plants and from plants situated away from coal mines to pit head to minimize cost of coal transportation thus leading to reduction in cost of power though the coal imports for consumption in utility sector are declining. The overall steam coal imports are increasing as the local coal production 
is unable to meet the requirements of coal-fired captive power plants. Topic: <laughs> Natural gas supply constraints. Topic: the installed capacity of natural gas-based power plants including the plants ready to be commissioned with the commencement of natural gas supply is nearly 26,765 megawatts at the end of financial year 2014-15. These base load power plants are operating at overall PLF of 25% only due to severe shortage of natural gas in the country. Imported LNG was too costly for the power generation. Many of these power stations are shut down throughout the year for lack of natural gas supply. Natural gas shortage for power sector alone is nearly 100 MMS CMD. The break-even price for switching from imported coal to LNG in electricity generation is estimated near $6 per MMBTU. Indian government has taken steps to enhance the generation from the stranded gas-based power plants for meeting peak load demand by waiving applicable import duties and taxes due to drastic fall in the LNG and crude oil international prices. Gasification of coal or lignite or pet coke or biomass, produces syngas or coal gas or wood gas which is a mixture of hydrogen, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide gases. Coal gas can be converted into synthetic natural gas by using fischer tropsch process at low pressure and high temperature. Coal gas can also be produced by underground coal gasification where the coal deposits are located deep in the ground or uneconomical to mine the coal. Synthetic natural gas production technologies have tremendous scope to meet the SNG requirements of gas-based power stations fully using the locally available coal or imported coal in short run. Dankuni Coal Complex is producing syngas which is piped to the industrial users in Calcutta. Many coal-based fertilizer plants which are shut down can also be retrofitted economically to produce synthetic natural gas for bridging natural gas shortages. It is estimated that SNG production cost would be below $6 per MMBTU. The indigenously produced natural gas by the exploration and production e &P contractors sold at prevailing international gas prices do not guarantee the natural gas supply whereas the SNG produced from coal, biomass is reliable and dependable fuel supply to the gas-based power stations and other natural gas consumers. Topic retirement of old thermal power plants Topic India's coal-fired, oil-fired and natural gas-fired thermal power plants are inefficient and offer significant potential for greenhouse gas CO2 emission reduction through better technologies. India's thermal power plants emit 50% to 120% more CO2 per kWh produced when compared to the average emissions from their European Union EU27 counterparts. The central government has firmed up plans to shut down 11,000 MW of coal-based power generation capacity that are at least 25 years old and contributing more pollution. In captive power sector, there is no retirement policy yet for the thermal power plants which are contributing to excessive pollution due to their vintage technology and aging. Recently few old diesel generator plants and gas turbine plants were also decommissioned. However their residual life can be used effectively for ancillary services by keeping them in working condition and connected to grid. Topic renewable energy Topic India's renewable energy sector is amongst the world's most active players in renewable energy use, especially solar and wind electricity generation. As of 31 March 2018, India had grid-connected installed capacity of about 69.02 GW non-conventional renewable technologies-based electricity capacity and conventional renewable power or major hydroelectric power capacity of 45.29 MW. The total renewable power generation capacity as of 31 March 2018 was 114.31 GW. Bidding process for further 115 gigawatts will be completed by the end of FY 2019-20 to achieve a total of 175 gigawatts total installed capacity of non-conventional renewable power by the 31st of March 2022 and the central GOVT has set up 350 million dollars fund to finance the solar projects. Topic hydropower topic The hydroelectric power plants at Darjeeling and Shivanasamudram were established in 1898 and 1902 respectively and were among the first in Asia. India is endowed with economically exploitable and viable hydro potential assessed to be about 125,570 MW at 60% load factor. 
India ranked fourth globally by underutilized hydro power potential. Viable hydro potential keeps on varying depending on the technological improvements and the prevailing costs of electricity generation from other sources. In addition, 6,740 megawatts from small, mini, and micro hydro potential have been assessed. Also, 56 sites for pumped storage schemes with an aggregate installed capacity of 94,000 megawatts have been identified. It is the most widely used form of renewable energy. India is blessed with immense amount of hydroelectric potential and ranks fifth in terms of exploitable hydro potential on global scenario. The installed capacity as of the 31st of March 2018 is approximately 45,293.42 megawatts, which is 13.17% of total installed utility capacity in India. In addition, 4,486 megawatts capacity from small, mini, and micro hydro schemes have been installed. The public sector has a predominant share of 97% in this sector. National Hydroelectric Power Corporation NHPC, Northeast Electric Power Company NEEPCO, Satluj Jal Vidit Nigam SJVNL, Terry Hydro Development Corporation, NTPC Hydro are a few public sector companies engaged in development of hydroelectric power in India. Pumped storage schemes are perfect centralized peaking power stations for the load management in the electricity grid. Pumped storage schemes would be in high demand for meeting peak load demand and storing the surplus electricity as India graduates from electricity deficit to electricity surplus. They also produce secondary, seasonal power at no additional cost when rivers are flooding with excess water. Storing electricity by other alternative systems such as batteries, compressed air storage systems, etc. is more costly than electricity production by standby generator. India has already established nearly 4,785 megawatts pumped storage capacity which is part of its installed hydro power plants. Topic solar power Topic India is endowed with vast solar energy. The solar radiation of about 5,000 trillion kilowatt hours per year is incident over its land mass with average daily solar power potential of 0.25 kilowatt hours per square meter of used land area with the available commercially proven technologies. As of the 31st of March 2018, the installed capacity was 21.65 gigawatts, meeting 2% of the utility electricity generation. Installation of solar power plants require nearly 2.4 hectares (0.024 square kilometers) land per megawatt capacity, which is similar to coal-fired power plants when life cycle coal mining, consumptive water storage, and ash disposal areas are also accounted, and hydro power plants when submergence area of water reservoir is also also accounted. 1.33 million megawatts capacity solar plants can be installed in India on its 1% land square km. There are vast tracts of land suitable for solar power in all parts of India exceeding 8% of its total area which are unproductive barren and devoid of vegetation. Part of wastelands when installed with solar power plants can produce 2,000 billion kWh of electricity two times the total generation in the year 2013-14 with land annual productivity, yield of 1 million rupees per acre at 4 rupees per kWh price which is at par with many industrial areas and many times more than the best productive irrigated agriculture lands. Moreover, these solar power plants are not dependent on supply of any raw material and are self-productive. There is unlimited scope for solar electricity to replace all fossil fuel energy requirements natural gas, coal, lignite, nuclear fuels and crude oil if all the marginally productive lands are occupied by solar power plants in future. The solar power potential of India can meet perennially to cater per capita energy consumption at par with USA, Japan for the peak population in its demographic transition. Indian solar PV power tariff has fallen to 2 rupees and 44 paise, 3.4 US per kilowatt hour in May 2017, which is lower than any other type of power generation in India. In the year 2017, the levelized tariff in US dollar for solar electricity has fallen to 1.79 cents per kilowatt hour which is far cheaper than the fuel cost incurred by coal-based power plants in India. Solar thermal power plants with thermal storage are emerging as cheaper US 5 per kilowatt hour and clean load following power plants compared to fossil fuel power plants. They can cater the load, demand round the clock perfectly and work as base load power plants also when the extracted solar energy is found excess in a day. 
Proper mix of solar thermal and solar PV can fully match the load fluctuations without the support of costly battery storage or costly non-solar power plants with dispatchability and reliability. Land acquisition is a challenge to solar farm projects in India. Some state governments are exploring means to address land availability through innovation, for example, by exploring means to deploy solar capacity above their extensive irrigation canal projects, thereby harvesting solar energy while reducing the loss of irrigation water by solar evaporation. The state of Gujarat was first to implement the canal solar power project, to use 19,000 km miles long network of Narmada canals across the state for setting up solar panels to generate electricity. It was the first ever such project in India. Synergy with irrigation water pumping and hydro power stations The major disadvantage of solar power PV type only is that it can only produce electricity in daylight which is not available during nighttime and cloudy daytime. This disadvantage can be overcome by installing grid storage, such as pumped storage hydroelectricity. Ultimate electricity requirement for river water pumping excluding ground water pumping is 570 billion kilowatt hours to pump 1 cubic meter of water for each square meter area by 125 meters height on average for irrigating 140 million hectares of net zone area 42% of total land for 3 crops in a year interlinking indian rivers is achieved by envisaging coastal reservoirs for productive use of the available river waters these river water pumping stations would also be envisaged with pumped storage hydroelectricity features to generate electricity when necessary to stabilize the grid needs. Also, all existing and future hydro power stations can be expanded with additional pumped storage hydroelectricity units to cater nighttime electricity consumption. Most of the ground water pumping power can be met directly by solar power during the daytime. Topic wind power Topic India has the fourth largest installed wind power capacity in the world. The development of wind power in India began in the 1990s in Tamil Nadu and has significantly increased in the last decade. As of 31 March 2018, the installed capacity of wind power was 34.05 gigawatts, spread across many states of India. The largest wind power generating state is Tamil Nadu accounting for nearly 23% of installed capacity, followed in decreasing order by Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and Karnataka. In the year 2015-16, wind power accounted for 8.5% of India's total installed power capacity, and 2.5% of the country's power output. India targets to install total 60 gigawatts of wind power capacity by 2022. The wind power tariff of around 2 Indian rupees and 50 paise per kilowatt hour is cheapest of all power generation sources in India. Topic biomass power topic biomass is organic matter derived from living or recently living organisms. As an energy source, biomass can either be used directly via combustion to produce heat or indirectly after converting it to various forms of biofuel. Conversion of biomass to biofuel can be achieved by different methods which are broadly classified into, thermal, chemical, and biochemical methods. In this system biomass, bagasse, forestry, domestic organic wastes, industrial organic wastes, organic residue from biogas plants and agro-residue and agricultural wastes are used as fuel to produce electricity. Nearly 750 million tons of non-edible by cattle biomass is available annually in India which can be put to use for higher value addition. Biomass is a renewable energy source as it is generated by extracting the carbon dioxide gas from the atmosphere. Its use for electricity generation is carbon neutral fuel because it would also release global warming greenhouse gases like methane and carbon dioxide when it is left to decay, degenerate without using as an energy source. The total biomass traditional use in India is nearly 177 mtoe in the year 2013.20% of households in India use biomass and charcoal for cooking purpose. As traditional use of biomass is being replaced by LPG in rural areas at faster pace, biomass burning in agriculture fields has become major source for causing higher level air pollution in nearby towns and cities. Torrified biomass huge quantity of imported coal is being used in pulverized coal fired power stations. Raw biomass is not suitable for use in the pulverized coal mills as they are difficult to grind into fine powder due to its caking problem. However, 100% biomass can be fired after torrefaction in the pulverized coal mills for replacing imported coal. 
Torrified biomass plants can be integrated with existing pulverized coal-fired power stations using the available hot flue gas as heat source. Co-firing dry biomass up to 20% heat input with coal is possible directly in pulverized coal-fired power stations without facing caking problem. Northwest and southern regions can replace imported coal use with biomass where surplus agriculture, crop residue biomass is burnt in the fields causing pollution problems. Many old and smaller capacity coal-fired power plants are being shut down permanently due to pollution problems. These units can be retrofitted economically to produce electricity from biomass without appreciable pollution. Biomass power plants can also get extra income by selling the Renewable Energy Certificates REC. Biomass Gasifier India has been promoting biomass gasifier technologies in its rural areas, to use surplus biomass resources such as rice husk, crop stocks, small wood chips, other agro residues. The goal was to produce electricity for villages with power plants of up to 2 MW capacities. During 2011, India installed 25 rice husk-based gasifier systems for distributed power generation in 70 remote villages of Bihar. The largest biomass-based power plant in India is at Sirohi, Rajasthan, having the capacity of 20 MW, i.e., Sambhav Energy Limited. In addition, gasifier systems are being installed at 60 rice mills in India. During the year, biomass gasifier projects of 1.20 MW in Gujarat and 0.5 MW in Tamil Nadu were successfully installed. Biogas This pilot program aims to install small-scale biogas plants for meeting the cooking energy needs in rural areas of India. During 2011, some 45,000 small-scale biogas plants were installed. Cumulatively, India has installed 4.44 million small-scale biogas plants. In 2011, India started a new initiative with the aim to demonstrate medium-size mixed-feed biogas fertilizer pilot plants. This technology aims for generation, purification, enrichment, bottling and piped distribution of biogas. India approved 21 of these projects with aggregate capacity of 37,016 cubic meter per day, of which two projects have been successfully commissioned by December 2011. India has additionally commissioned 158 projects under its biogas-based distributed, grid power generation program, with a total installed capacity of about 2 MW. Biogas which is mainly methane, natural gas can also be used for generating protein-rich feed for cattle, poultry and fish in villages economically by cultivating Methylococcus capsulatus bacteria culture with tiny land and water footprint. The carbon dioxide gas produced as by-product from these units can be put to use in cheaper production of algae oil or spirulina from algae cultivation particularly in tropical countries like India which can displace the prime position of crude oil in near future. Union government is implementing many schemes to use productively the agro-waste or biomass in rural areas to uplift rural economy and job potential. Using biogas for high-protein rich feed production is also eligible for carbon credits as they also perform carbon sequestration from the atmosphere. As of 2010, India burnt over 200 million tons of coal replacement worth of traditional biomass fuel every year to meet its energy need for cooking and other domestic use. This traditional biomass fuel, fuel wood, crop waste and animal dung, is a potential raw material for the application of biomass technologies for the recovery of cleaner fuel, fertilizers and electricity with significantly lower pollution. Biomass available in India has been playing an important role as fuel for sugar mills, textiles, paper mills, and small and medium enterprises SME. In particular there is a significant potential in breweries, textile mills, fertilizer plants, the paper and pulp industry, solvent extraction units, rice mills, petrochemical plants and other industries to harness biomass power. Topic geothermal energy Topic Geothermal energy is thermal energy generated and stored in the earth. Thermal energy is the energy that determines the temperature of matter. India's geothermal energy installed capacity is experimental. Commercial use is insignificant. According to some ambitious estimates, India has 10,600 megawatts of potential in the geothermal provinces but it still needs to be exploited. India has potential resources to harvest geothermal energy. The resource map for India has been grouped into six geothermal provinces, Himalayan province, tertiary orogenic belt with tertiary magmatism areas of faulted blocks, Aravalli belt, Naga Lushi, west coast regions and Sun Narmada lineament. 
Volcanic Arc, Andaman and Nicobar Arc. Deep sedimentary basin of tertiary age such as Cambay Basin in Gujarat. Radioactive Province, Sarikand, Hazarabah, Jharkhand. Cratonic Province, Peninsular India India has about 340 hot springs spread over the country. Of this, 62 are distributed along the northwest Himalaya, in the states of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. They are found concentrated along a 30–50 km wide thermal band mostly along the river valleys. Naga Lusai and West Coast Provinces manifest a series of thermal springs. Andaman and Nicobar Arc is the only place in India where volcanic activity, a continuation of the Indonesian geothermal fields, and can be good potential sites for geothermal energy. Kambay Graban Geothermal Belt is 200 km long and 50 km wide with tertiary sediments. Thermal springs have been reported from the belt although they are not a very high temperature and discharge. During oil and gas drilling in this area, in recent times, high subsurface temperature and thermal fluid have been reported in deep drill wells in depth ranges of 1.7 to 1.9 km. Steam blowout have also been reported in the drill holes in depth range of 1.5 to 3.4 km. The thermal springs in India's peninsular region are more related to the faults, which allow down circulation of meteoric water to considerable depths. The circulating water acquires heat from the normal thermal gradient in the area, and depending upon local condition, emerges out at suitable localities. The area includes Aravalli Range, Sun Narmada Tapti Lineament, Godavari and Mahanadi Valleys, and South Cratonic Belts. In a December 2011 report, India identified six most promising geothermal sites for the development of geothermal energy. These are, in decreasing order of potential, Tatapani in Chhattisgarh Puga in Jammu and Kashmir Kambay Graban in Gujarat Manikaran in Himachal Pradesh Sarikand in Jharkhand Chumathang in Jammu and Kashmir India plans to set up its first geothermal power plant, with 2 to 5 MW capacity at Puga in Jammu and Kashmir. Topic tidal power topic Tidal power, also called tidal energy, is a form of hydropower that converts the energy obtained from tides into useful forms of power, mainly electricity. The potential of tidal wave energy becomes higher in certain regions by local effects such as shelving, funneling, reflection and resonance. India is surrounded by sea on three sides, its potential to harness tidal energy is significant. Energy can be extracted from tides in several ways. In one method, a reservoir is created behind a barrage and then tidal waters pass through turbines in the barrage to generate electricity. This method requires mean tidal differences greater than 4 meters and also favorable topographical conditions to keep installation costs low. One report claims the most attractive locations in India, for the barrage technology, are the Gulf of Kambat and the Gulf of Kutch on India's west coast where the maximum tidal range is 11 meters and 8 meters with average tidal range of 6.77 meters and 5.23 meters respectively. The Ganges Delta in the Sundarbans, West Bengal is another possibility, although with significantly less recoverable energy, the maximum tidal range in Sundarbans is approximately 5 metres with an average tidal range of 2.97 metres. The report claims, barrage technology could harvest about 8 gigawatts from tidal energy in India, mostly in Gujarat. The barrage approach has several disadvantages, one being the effect of any badly engineered barrage on the migratory fishes, marine ecosystem and aquatic life. Integrated barrage technology plants can be expensive to build. In December 2011, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, Government of India and the Renewable Energy Development Agency of GOVT, of West Bengal jointly approved and agreed to implement India's first 3.75 MW Durgaduani mini tidal power project. Indian government believes that tidal energy may be an attractive solution to meet the local energy demands of this remote delta region. Another tidal wave technology harvests energy from surface waves or from pressure fluctuations below the sea surface. A report from the Ocean Engineering Centre, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras estimates the annual wave energy potential along the Indian coast is between 5 MW to 15 MW per metre, suggesting a theoretical maximum potential for electricity harvesting from India's 7,500 km coastline may be about 40 GW. However, the realistic economical potential, the report claims, is likely to be considerably less. A significant barrier to surface energy harvesting is the interference of its equipment to fishing and other sea-bound vessels, particularly in unsettled weather. 
India built its first sea surface energy harvesting technology demonstration plant in Vizhinjam, near Thiruruvananthpuram. The third approach to harvesting tidal energy consists of ocean thermal energy technology. This approach tries to harvest the solar energy trapped in ocean waters into usable energy. Oceans have a thermal gradient, the surface being much warmer than deeper levels of ocean. This thermal gradient may be harvested using modified Rankine cycle. India's National Institute of Ocean Technology attempted this approach over the last 20 years, but without success. In 2003, with Saga University of Japan, NIOT attempted to build and deploy a 1 MW demonstration plant. However, mechanical problems prevented success. After initial tests near Kerala, the unit was scheduled for redeployment and further development in the Lakshadweep Islands in 2005. The demonstration project's experience have limited follow-on efforts with ocean thermal energy technology in India. Topic nuclear power topic As of 31 March 2018, India had 6.78 gigawatts of installed nuclear power generation capacity or nearly 2% of total installed utility power generation capacity. Nuclear plants generated 38,247 million kilowatt-hours at 64.40% PLF in the year 2017-18, India. S nuclear power plant development began in 1964. India signed an agreement with General Electric of the United States for the construction and commissioning of two boiling water reactors at Tarapur. In 1967, this effort was placed under India's Department of Atomic Energy. In 1971, India set up its first pressurized heavy water reactors with Canadian collaboration in Rajasthan. In 1987, India created Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited to commercialize nuclear power. Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited is a public sector enterprise, wholly owned by the Government of India, under the administrative control of its Department of Atomic Energy. Its objective is to implement and operate nuclear power stations for India's electricity sector. The state-owned company has ambitious plans to establish 63 gigawatts generation capacity by 2032, as a safe, environmentally benign and economically viable source of electrical energy to meet the increasing electricity needs of India. India. S nuclear power generation effort satisfies many safeguards and oversights, such as getting ISO 14001 accreditation for environment management system and peer review by World Association of Nuclear Operators including a pre-startup peer review. Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited admits, in its annual report for 2011, that its biggest challenge is to address the public and policy maker perceptions about the safety of nuclear power, particularly after the Fukushima incident in Japan. In 2011, India had 18 pressurized heavy water reactors in operation, with another four projects of 2.8 gigawatts capacity launched. The country plans to implement fast breeder reactors, using plutonium based fuel. Plutonium is obtained by reprocessing spent fuel of first stage reactors. India is in the process of launching its first prototype fast breeder reactor of 500 MW capacity in Tamil Nadu. India has nuclear power plants operating in the following states, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. These reactors have an installed electricity generation capacity between 100 MW and 540 MW each. KKNPP Unit 1 with a capacity of 1000 MWE was commissioned in July, 2013 while KKNPP Unit 2, also with a capacity of 1000 MWE is nearing first approach to criticality in 2016. In 2011 the Wall Street Journal reported the discovery of uranium in a new mine in India, the country's largest ever. The estimated reserves of 64,000 tons, could be as large as 150,000 tons making the mine one of the world's largest. The new mine is expected to provide India with a fuel that it now imports. Nuclear fuel supply constraints had limited India's ability to grow its nuclear power generation capacity. The newly discovered ore, unlike those in Australia, is of slightly lower grade. This mine is expected to be in operation in 2012. India's share of nuclear power plant generation capacity is just 1.2% of worldwide nuclear power production capacity, making it the 15th largest nuclear power producer. 
India aims to supply 9% of its electricity needs with nuclear power by 2032. India's largest nuclear power plant project is planned to be implemented at Jadapur, Maharashtra in partnership with Areva, France. India's government is also developing up to 62, mostly thorium reactors, which it expects to be operational by 2025. It is the only country in the world with a detailed, funded, government-approved plan to focus on thorium-based nuclear power. The country currently gets under 2% of its electricity from nuclear power, with the rest coming from coal 60%, hydroelectricity 16%, other renewable sources 12%, and natural gas 9%. It expects to produce around 25% of its electricity from nuclear power. Topic electricity transmission and distribution Topic As of 2013, India has a single wide area synchronous grid that covers the entire country except distant islands. The spread of high voltage transmission lines is such that it can form a square matrix of area 266 square kilometers i.e. on average, at least one HV line within 8.15 kilometers distance, vicinity in entire area of the country. The length of high voltage transmission lines is nearly 20% more than that of the United States 322,000 kilometers 200,000 miles of 230 kilovolts and above but transmits far less electricity. The HV transmission lines 66 kV and above installed in the country is 649,833 km 403,788 miles i.e. on average, at least one 66 kV transmission line within 4.95 km distance. The length of transmission lines 400 volts and above and excluding 220 volts lines is 10,381,226 kilometers 6,450,595 miles as on the 31st of March 2018 in the country. The spread of total transmission lines 400 volts is such that it can form a square matrix of area 0.36 square kilometers i.e. on average at least one transmission line within 0.31 kilometers distance in entire area of the country. The all-time maximum peak load is not exceeding 179,571 megawatts in the unified grid whereas the all-time peak load met is 170,895 megawatts on 30 May 2018. The maximum achieved demand factor of substations is nearly 60% at 220 kV level. The operational performance of the huge capacity substations and the vast network of high voltage transmission lines with low demand factor is not satisfactory in meeting the peak electricity load. Detailed forensic engineering studies are to be undertaken and system inadequacies rectified to evolve into smart grid for maximizing utility of the existing transmission infrastructure with optimum future capital investments. The July 2012 blackout, affecting the north of the country, was the largest power grid failure in history by number of people affected. The introduction of Availability Based Tariff has brought about stability to a great extent in the Indian transmission grids. However, presently it is becoming outdated in a power surplus grid. India's aggregate transmission and commercial ATC losses is nearly 21.35% in 2017-18. Whereas the total ATC loss was only 9.43% out of the 4,113 billion kWh electricity supplied in USA during the year 2013. The government has pegged the national ATC losses at around 24% for the year 2011 and has set a target of reducing them to 17.1% by 2017 and to 14.1% by 2022. A high proportion of non-technical losses are caused by illegal tapping of lines, faulty electric meters and fictitious power generation that underestimate actual consumption and also contribute to reduced payment collection. A case study in Kerala estimated that replacing faulty meters could reduce distribution losses from 34% to 29%. Topic regulation and administration Topic The Ministry of Power is India's apex central government body regulating the electrical energy sector in India. This ministry was created on 2 July 1992. It is responsible for planning, policy formulation, processing of projects for investment decisions, monitoring project implementation, training and manpower development, and the administration and enactment of legislation in regard to thermal, hydro power generation, transmission and distribution. It is also responsible for the administration of India. 
S Electricity Act 2003, the Energy Conservation Act 2001, and to undertake such amendments to these acts as and when necessary in conformity with the Indian government. S policy objectives electricity is a concurrent list subject at entry 38 in list 3 of the 7th schedule of the Constitution of India. In India S federal governance structure this means that both the central government and India S state governments are involved in establishing policy and laws for its electricity sector This principle motivates central government of India and individual state governments to enter into memorandum of understanding to help expedite projects and reform electricity sector in respective state to bring transparency and dissemination of information to the public in power purchases by the DISCOMs, Government of India recently stated posting data on daily basis in its website. Trading Bulk power purchasers can buy electricity on daily basis for short, medium and long-term duration from reverse e-auction facility. The electricity prices transacted under reverse e-auction facility are far less than the prices agreed under bilateral agreements. Multi-commodity exchange has sought permission to offer electricity future markets in India. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Government-owned power companies. Topic: India's Ministry of Power administers central government-owned companies involved in the generation of electricity in India. These include National Thermal Power Corporation, Damodar Valley Corporation, National Hydroelectric Power Corporation and Nuclear Power Corporation of India. The Power Grid Corporation of India is also administered by the ministry. It is responsible for the interstate transmission of electricity and the development of national grid. The ministry works with various state governments in matters related to state government owned corporations in India's electricity sector. Examples of state corporations include Telangana Power Generation Corporation, Andhra Pradesh Power Generation Corporation Limited, Assam Power Generation Corporation Limited, Tamil Nadu Electricity Board, Maharashtra State Electricity Board, Kerala State Electricity Board, and Gujarat Urja Vikas Nigam Limited. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Funding of power infrastructure. Topic: India's Ministry of Power administers Rural Electrification Corporation Limited and Power Finance Corporation Limited. These central government-owned public sector enterprises provide loans and guarantees for public and private electricity sector infrastructure projects in India. Without the realistic assessment of required capacity addition, every major bank, whether in public or private sector, has encouraged the businessmen to install thermal power plants by offering substantial loans at 75% of over-estimated costs on overrated plant capacities literally loan more than 100% of actual project cost which has led to stranded assets of $40 to $60 billion. However, central and state-owned power generators have escaped the crisis as they had entered PPAs with the state-owned monopolistic discoms on cost plus basis at higher than prevailing market power tariffs without undergoing competitive bidding process. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Borrowing by state-owned discoms. Topic: the accumulated losses of state-owned discoms without subsidies rose from 11,699 crore rupees, 117 billion in 2004-05 to 71,271 crore rupees, 713 billion in 2013-14. These losses have resulted in state discoms relying more on short-term loans to fund their operations. Borrowings by state discoms rose from 1 rupee 58003 crore 1.58 trillion in 2007-08 to 5 rupees 45922 crore 5.46 trillion in 2013-14 CAGR 23%. Consequently, the interest cost on these loans worsens the poor finances of state discoms. Poor finances of the discoms affect their ability to buy power, thus leading to power deficits. Topic. Budgetary support Topic. After the enactment of Electricity Act 2003 budgetary support to power sector is negligible. 
State electricity boards get initial financial help from central government in the event of their unbundling and transparency. Topic: <laughs> Human resource development. Topic: Rapid growth of electricity sector in India demands that talent and trained personnel become available as India's new installed capacity adds new jobs. India has initiated the process to rapidly expand energy education in the country, to enable the existing educational institutions to introduce courses related to energy capacity addition, production, operations and maintenance, in their regular curriculum. This initiative includes conventional and renewable energy. A Ministry of Renewable and New Energy announcement claims state renewable energy agencies are being supported to organize short-term training programs for installation, operation and maintenance and repair of renewable energy systems in such places where intensive re-program are being implemented. Renewable energy chairs have been established in IIT Roorkee and IIT Kharagpur. Central Training Institute Jubalpur is a primer power distribution engineering and management training institute. Education and availability of skilled workers is expected to be a key challenge in India's effort to rapidly expand its electricity sector. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Problems with India's power sector. Topic: <inaudible> India's electricity sector faces many issues. Some are inadequate last mile connectivity is the main problem to supply electricity for all users. The country already has adequate generation and transmission capacity to meet the full demand temporally and spatially. However, due to lack of last mile link up with all electricity consumers and reliable power supply to exceed 99%, many consumers depend on DG sets using costly diesel oil for meeting unavoidable power requirements. Also more than 10 million households are using battery storage UPS as backup in case of load shedding. India imports nearly $2 billion worth of battery storage UPS every year. Nearly 80 billion kWh electricity is generated annually in India by DG sets which are consuming nearly 15 million tons of diesel oil. As the overhead lines availability is low during rains and wind storms, separate buried cables are to be laid from the distribution low voltage substations to supply cheaper emergency power to the needy consumers in cities and towns to drastically reduce diesel oil consumption by DG sets and installation of UPS systems. Demand build-up measures can be initiated to consume the cheaper electricity average price 2 rupees and 50 paise per kWhr available from the grid instead of running the coal, gas, oil-fired captive power plants in various electricity-intensive industries. The captive power generation capacity by coal, gas, oil-fired plants is nearly 53,000 megawatts mainly established in steel, fertilizer, aluminium, cement, etc. industries. These bulk captive electricity producers can draw cheaper electricity from the grid on short-term open access basis and avoid the costly imported coal, RLNG, natural gas or use these fuels for process purposes instead of electricity generation. Some of these idling captive power plants can be used for ancillary services or grid reserve service for earning extra revenue. At present substantial diesel oil is consumed by railways for rail traffic on its non-electrified rail lines. To eliminate the substantial cost of imported diesel fuel, Power Ministry is envisaging to fund the electrification of these lines and achieve additional power demand of 7 billion units. No access to electricity, over 200 million people in India or 39 million households have no access to electricity. Of those who do, almost all find electricity supply intermittent and unreliable. However, many of the power stations are idling for lack of electricity demand. The idling generation capacity can supply three times the domestic electricity needs nearly 80 billion kilowatt-hours of the people who do not have access to electricity. A system of cross-subsidization is practiced based on the principle of the consumer's ability to pay. In general, the industrial and commercial consumers subsidize the domestic and agricultural consumers. Further, government giveaways such as free electricity for farmers, partly to curry political favor, have depleted the cash reserves of state-run electricity distribution system and led them to amassing a debt of 2.5 trillion rupees 35 billion dollars. 
This has financially crippled the distribution network, and its ability to pay for purchasing power to meet the demand in the absence of subsidy reimbursement from state governments. This situation has been worsened by state government departments that do not pay their electricity bills. Name plate, declared capacity of the many coal-fired plants owned by IPPs are overrated above the actual maximum continuous rating capacity. The reason for overrating the capacity is to over-invoice the plant cost. These plants operate 15-10% below their declared capacity on daily basis and operate rarely at declared capacity. Thus these units are not effectively contributing to the online spinning reserves to maintain power system, grid stabilization. This is also due to reason that point of connection charges are levied in India based on energy exported instead of MCR capacity as applicable for national grid in UK. Intraday load and demand graphs are not made in India at every 15 minutes or less intervals to understand power grid nature and its shortcomings with respect to grid frequency. These graphs should be plotted with comprehensive data collected from SCADA, online for all grid connected generating stations 100 kilowatts, and load data from all substations to impart authenticity to the data presented. Comprehensive list of grid connected power stations along with declared capacity shall be prepared by CPOSOCO for all types of power plants including wind, solar, biomass, cogeneration, etc. and update the data on weekly basis. Coal supply, despite abundant reserves of coal, the country ISN T producing enough to feed its power plants. India S monopoly coal producer, state-controlled coal India, is constrained by primitive mining techniques and is rife with theft and corruption. Poor coal transport infrastructure has worsened these problems. To expand its coal production capacity, Coal India needs to mine new deposits. However, most of India's coal lies under protected forests or designated tribal lands. Any mining activity or land acquisition for infrastructure in these coal-rich areas of India, has been rife with political demonstrations, social activism and public interest litigations. Being massive consumer of local and imported coal, India should end the Coal India S coal pricing monopoly and implement coal trading in commodities stock exchange to arrive at market determine coal price on daily basis. This is possible by devising standard coal grades, trading instruments and identifying coal supply hubs in Central India, Eastern India, West Coast and East Coast to facilitate trading in imported and local coal. Poor pipeline connectivity and infrastructure to harness India's abundant coal bed methane and natural gas potential. The giant new offshore natural gas field has delivered far less gas than claimed causing shortage of natural gas. Average transmission, distribution and consumer level losses exceeding 30% which includes auxiliary power consumption of thermal power stations, fictitious electricity generation by wind generators, solar power plants and independent power producers IPPs, etc. The residential building sector is one of the largest consumers of electricity in India. Continuous urbanization and the growth of population result in increasing power consumption in buildings. Thus, while experts express the huge potential for energy conservation in this sector, the belief still predominates among stakeholders that energy-efficient buildings are more expensive than conventional buildings, which adversely affects the greening of the building sector. Key implementation challenges for India's electricity sector include new project management and execution, ensuring availability of fuel quantities and qualities, lack of initiative to develop large coal and natural gas resources available in India, land acquisition, environmental clearances at state and central government level, and training of skilled manpower to prevent talent shortages for operating latest technology plants. Hydroelectric power projects in India's mountainous north and northeast regions have been slowed down by ecological, environmental and rehabilitation controversies, coupled with public interest litigations. Theft of power, in India, financial loss due to theft of electricity may be around $16 billion yearly. Populist pro-free power measures also bleed the power companies. Some power companies continue to bleed and lead to bankruptcy due to one of these factors. This also lead to pay more by legal users. This creates a scenario where villages have huge cut of power and simultaneously availability of power in the grid with no purchase by DISCOMs. 
Losses in the connector systems, service connections leading to premature failure of capital equipments like Transformers India's nuclear power generation potential has been stymied by political activism since the Fukushima disaster. The track record of executing nuclear power plants is also very poor in India lack of clean and reliable energy sources such as electricity is, in part, causing about 260 million people in India to continue depending on traditional biomass energy sources, namely fuel wood, agricultural waste and livestock dung, for cooking and other domestic needs. Traditional fuel combustion is the primary source of indoor air pollution in India, causes between 300,000 and 400,000 deaths per year and other chronic health issues. Topic foreign electricity trade Topic India's national grid is synchronously interconnected to Bhutan, and asynchronously linked with Bangladesh and Nepal. An interconnection with Myanmar, and an undersea interconnection to Sri Lanka, India -Sri -Lanka HVDC interconnection has also been proposed. India has been exporting electricity to Bangladesh and Nepal and importing excess electricity from Bhutan. In 2015, Nepal imported 224.21 MW of electric power from India, and Bangladesh imported 500 MW. Bangladesh wants to import 10,000 MW power from India where substantial power capacity is unable to generate electricity for lack of power demand. Bangladesh, Myanmar and Pakistan are producing substantial natural gas and using for electricity generation purpose. Bangladesh, Myanmar and Pakistan produce 55 million cubic meters per day MCMD, 9 MCMD and 118 MCMD out of which 20 MCMD, 1. 4 MCMD and 34 MCMD are consumed for electricity generation respectively. Whereas the natural gas production in India is not even adequate to meet its non-electricity requirements. Bangladesh, Myanmar and Pakistan have proven reserves of 184 billion cubic meters BCM, 283 BCM and 754 BCM respectively. There is ample opportunity for mutually beneficial trading in energy resources with these countries. India can supply its surplus electricity to Pakistan and Bangladesh in return for the natural gas imports by gas pipelines. Similarly India can develop on boot basis hydro power projects in Bhutan, Nepal and Myanmar. India can also enter into long-term power purchase agreements with China for developing the hydro power potential in Brahmaputra River Basin of Tibet region. India can also supply its surplus electricity to Sri Lanka by undersea cable link. There is ample trading synergy for India with its neighbouring countries in securing its energy requirements. <laughs> electricity as substitute to imported LPG and kerosene the net import of liquefied petroleum gas LPG is 6.093 million tons and the domestic consumption is 13.568 million tons with 41,546 crore rupees subsidy to the domestic consumers in the year 2012-13. The LPG import content is nearly 40% of total consumption in India. The affordable electricity retail tariff 860 kilocalories kWh at 90% heating efficiency to replace LPG lower heating value 11000 kilocalories per kilogram at 75% heating efficiency in domestic cooking is 6 rupees and 47 paise per kWh when the retail price of LPG cylinder is 1000 rupees without subsidy with 14.2 kilograms LPG content Replacing LPG consumption with electricity reduces its imports substantially. The domestic consumption of kerosene is 7.349 million tons with 30,151 crore rupees subsidy to the domestic consumers in the year 2012-13. The subsidized retail price of kerosene is 13 rupees and 69 paise per litre whereas the export, import price is 48 rupees per litre. The affordable electricity retail tariff 860 kilocalories kWh at 90% heating efficiency to replace kerosene lower heating value 8240 kilocalories liter at 75% heating efficiency in domestic cooking is 6 rupees per kWh when kerosene retail price is 48 rupees per liter without subsidy. 
In the year 2014-15, the plant load factor PLF of coal-fired thermal power stations is only 64.46% whereas these stations can run above 85% PLF comfortably provided there is adequate electricity demand in the country. The additional electricity generation at 85% PLF is nearly 240 billion units which is adequate to replace all the LPG and kerosene consumption in domestic sector. The incremental cost of generating additional electricity is only their coal fuel cost which is less than 3 rupees per kWh. Enhancing the PLF of coal-fired stations and encouraging domestic electricity consumers to substitute electricity in place of LPG and kerosene in household cooking, would reduce the government subsidies and idle capacity of thermal power stations can be put to use economically. The domestic consumers who are willing to surrender the subsidized LPG, kerosene permits or eligible for subsidized LPG, kerosene permits, may be given free electricity connection and subsidized electricity tariff. Since 2017, IPPs are offering to sell solar and wind power below 3 rupees per kWh to feed into the high voltage grid. After considering distribution costs and losses, this electricity price is quite profitable for the solar power to replace LPG and kerosene use in domestic sector. Electric vehicle The retail prices of petrol and diesel are high in India to make electricity-driven vehicles more economical as more and more electricity is generated from solar energy in near future without appreciable environmental effects. The retail price of diesel is 65.00 Rs. liter in the year 2017-18. The affordable electricity retail price 860 kilocalories kWh at 75% input electricity to shaft power efficiency to replace diesel lower heating value 8572 kilocalories liter at 40% fuel energy to crank shaft power efficiency is 12 rupees and 21 paise per kWh. The retail price of petrol is 70 rupees per liter in the year 2017-18. The affordable electricity retail price 860 kilocalories kWh at 75% input electricity to shaft power efficiency to replace petrol lower heating value 7693 kilocalories liter at 33% fuel energy to crank shaft power efficiency is 17 rupees and 79 paise per kWh. In the year 2012-13, India consumed 15.744 million tonnes petrol and 69.179 million tonnes diesel, which are mainly produced from imported crude oil at huge foreign exchange outgo. Electricity driven vehicles would become popular in future when its energy storage, battery technology becomes more long lasting and maintenance free. V2G is also feasible with electricity driven vehicles to contribute for catering the peak load in the electricity grid. Electricity-driven vehicles can also be continuously charged with wireless electricity transmission wet technology which transmits electricity over 5 km distance without wires to charge devices mobile and stationary between the range of 3 to 12 volts under any weather conditions. <inaudible> <inaudible> Energy reserves India being located mostly in tropics, its abundant solar power potential along with its wind, hydro and biomass power potential can meet all its energy needs perennially without depending on fossil fuels. The renewable solar and wind power potential of India is also capable to achieve food security in addition to energy security as high protein rich feed for fish poultry cattle can be produced from water with electricity which is known as power to food according to oil and gas journal India had approximately 38 trillion cubic feet TCF of proven natural gas reserves as of January 2011 world s 26th largest United States Energy Information Administration estimates that India produced approximately 1.8 TCF of natural gas in 2010, while consuming roughly 2.3 TCF of natural gas. The electrical power and fertilizer sectors account for nearly three quarters of natural gas consumption in India. Natural gas is expected to be an increasingly important component of energy consumption as the country pursues energy resource diversification and overall energy security. The country already produces some coal bed methane and has major potential to expand this source of cleaner fuel. 
According to a 2011 Oil and Gas Journal report, India is estimated to have between 600 and 2,000 TCF of shale gas resources one of the world's largest. Despite its natural resource potential, and an opportunity to create energy industry jobs, India has yet to hold a licensing round for its shale gas blocks. The traditional natural gas reserves too have been very slow to develop in India because regulatory burdens and bureaucratic red tape severely limit the country's ability to harness its natural gas resources. See also References Topic. Topic. External links. Topic. National Electricity Plan 2012 C. Government of India. Electricity grid maps of Southern Region. India's energy policy and electricity production.